Doopity doopity doop. Are we going through Miami? All right. We are actually going through Atlanta. I'm not. Oh wow, super hot surprised Atlanta. At that. Yeah. Well, that's that's because Miami is underwater. Still. Uh, fun story before we get started here. Uh, one of my employees uh, evacuated to Atlanta because he was like super scared, and his apartment in Orlando never lost power, but he lost power in Atlanta. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. That is adorable. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <sighs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I'm Evan Urban, we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hi. Ruben Bressler. Also, hi. <laughs> hey, quite, y'all. That was quite sultry. It was the sultriest as we get started here for an all new wonderful week of cool stuff to talk about. I didn't mean to do that, but you know what I mean. It's great. We have we have lots of we have lots of sweet stuff to talk about. And um, but we're gonna get started with our super cool giveaway. And we wanted to get now next week we're gonna give away a full booster box of Ixalan. This week we're gonna get ramped up by giving away a uh, a bundle, an Ixalan bundle, which is like the the forty dollar has packs and lands and stuff in it. And I'm putting the contest on our Twitter because I can't put it in YouTube because YouTube hates things. Aww. I'm gonna paste the the way that I usually paste these in the YouTube is that I put a bunch of uh, spaces in between the link, right? Mm. So that it will uh, at least you'll see the things um, that are in there, but, but uh, you're gonna have to delete the spaces yourselves. So our first pick this week uh, has to do with uh, a little a little piece of correspondence that wizard sent to what appears to be WPN stores in some fashion. Um, and I tweeted here, I'll bring up my tweet on the screen because it says, uh, Magic the Gathering closed beta test and there's token ad quantities that are based on your store level. So you can actually get beta access through your store. They're giving away those codes via tokens, uh, via treasure tokens that also, I guess, have a, have a beta key on it. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the things that they mention here is some of the connections being explored include code cards. And Lord knows we've been over and over and over the problems of Magic Online and things they could do, and code cards are definitely something that already exists in other games. Pokemon, you buy a Pokemon product or a booster pack, you get a code, you can go get the booster pack on on Pokemon Online. That's terrific. And that's that's literally has to be like, you know, that that has to be level zero. Um, But the, the idea of doing things with code cards is so unbelievably exciting. I mean, let's let's give you an example, okay? What if the only way you could get a alternate art nickel bolus was to show up at a Grand Prix in the next month or two? Hmm. What if that was part of the cheapy giveaways? What if right. you got a custom card back because you played at F and M four times this month in your local game store? Like, or you know, your, the F and M you know runners can give you a code card for that. You know, the ability to provide digital rewards for real life stuff. This is this is the stuff that I think Wizards is ultimately looking at. This is what Wizards wanted to do. They understand that local stores, which there are thousands of, are ultimately what drive Magic success. But we can't make a uh, an online component that's so good that you don't want to go play anymore. So instead, you cross-pollinate. And this is essentially what we had talked about, or in at least some manner, and I've certainly made videos about it, uh, for Magic Online to do, but Magic Online was embarrassing. And MTG Arena is not embarrassing. So with the world of code card possibilities, the idea that you're already getting beta keys from your local store, which again, I think is, I think is a terrific sort of connection, way to get yeah. people excited about the, about the video game. Uh, you know, how, how do you guys feel about this option? Well, I appreciate the the fact that they make it sound like you can hand it out for for any type of event. You know, one of the downsides of F and M promos was that if there was a promo you really wanted, you had to play the format that corresponds to your local F and M. So I know there were people who didn't normally care about F and M, but damn it, they wanted those foil serum visions, and so they were like, "Oh hell, I gotta throw right. together a standard deck. I gotta throw together a modern deck, or you know, whatever it is." But it sounds like this is really open ended. It just says, "Hand out the promotional magic." That the gathering arena token add card to your community so it sounds like you could do it for fnm whatever your fnm might be i know my local game store has a local commander event once or twice a week you can maybe hand it out for that if you're hosting a pptq that's an option too if you're doing um the pre-releases like it doesn't sound like you're being locked into a certain kind of format or you know you can maybe hand them out for other things i know at my local game store also tends to do costume contests you know we're coming up to we're coming up to october and halloween or some people like to dress up for pre-releases you know i like that the criteria 
for handing these out is not hard and fast. And so you can really give them out to you know anybody you choose, even just good people in your community. If somebody's doing great things at your store, being really helpful, here's a token. Like I think that's really cool. I mean, I can only imagine getting a foil. I mean, you know, you get a foil gristle brand because you went to the GP that one year, right? And you also got a code to get a foil gristle brand alternate art online on MTG Arena. Like that's mm-hmm. that's right. a way. You, that's just. I mean, then that again, this that's, is the low hanging fruit. This is the that is how start. Pokemon does it, right? That's how the yeah. Pokemon online TCG and and the regular TCG function is that that you get a one for one digital product with your physical product. Not mm-hmm. per um, card, but per product. Is right per product. Now right. it's a little different in this announcement, and the key word here being select will be inserted into select tabletop products. So it's not gonna be in just everything, um, which I think was our hope. Our hope was that this was gonna be like World of Warcraft TCG loot, where every every pack had something that you could redeem online. Right. Aaron, is that how it functioned? Do you remember oh, that? Oh, I didn't play the card game. I think I bought ones, I think I bought a starter deck shortly after it debuted and it didn't remember. Right, but I mean, but with the loot cards, I mean, specifically, like to, right, to redeem oh. stuff. In any case, I mean, lots of other card games. And obviously, Wizards of the Coast has practiced with this, too, as I know from Kaijudo. Um, there was, you know, those cross-pollination as well. The fact that Magic hasn't done this, the first overarching thought is, the fact that Magic hasn't done this already is stupid. Um, <laughs> the fact that they're doing it now is great. Mm-hmm. Um, the implementation is going to be interesting to watch because of how many years of Magic we have already, you know, without... Um, the cross pollination, and we don't know when Arena is going to be available for everybody. Right. Um, so it's it's going to be see how they try to implement them, but certainly uh, I'm happy that they're going to give it a shot. I mean, I can't um, wait to go play a draft at my local store, which gives yeah. me a code to go play a draft on MTG Arena when I get home. Like exactly. That's that's going to be fantastic. I mean, gosh, the way they're going to be able to slice and dice this, they're going to have different card backs. They're not just going to be the one card back. And yep. That alone, like, you know, as Hearthstone has certainly seen, they've got, whatever, like a hundred of them now or something. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That Hearthstone money. Yeah, so Hearthstone, Hearthstone does want. it. Hearthstone money, or Hearthstone money. Hearthstone does it with uh, every time you log in, every month has a new card back. Right. Then mm-hmm. depending on sets you buy, if you if you buy this, a pack from this set, you get this card back. So there's, you know, four years times 12 plus, you know, 15 sets of backs already. Then there's like the uh, college tournament card back and a bunch of other specialty card back that you can get from going to different events. So you can get like the Grand Prix Las Vegas card back, or you can get the I went to FNM once or twice or four times in August card back. Well, or you, whatever. Could, you could get the I played at the Pro Tour card right, back. Right, there you go. Right, and right. that would be some pretty cool swag that you know you're playing against somebody who's at the Pro Tour because you see their card back. That's kind of neat. So um, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how they try to implement it. Um, did you receive? I see that this is from your Twitter. Did you receive this letter yourself, or is this a screenshot from somebody no, else? This was a screenshot I found on the internet, and I was just like, "Whoa!" And okay. yeah, I retweeted it in terms of like. I've it. seen a couple copies of the cards floating around. I think a, um, there was um, the folks from the Leaving a Legacy podcast uh, were among the hipsters of the Coast crew that was at Hascon, and I think one of them came back with the code and just like posted it in their Facebook group and be like, first come for serve and so there there are a couple that are already out there wow well that would be pretty terrific so either way they already sell they already sell like promotional physical sleeves of like i played at game day i played at this pro tour whatever so it'd be you know very easy to implement that kind of stuff uh digitally as well i know they do the the play mats for the pro tour i don't know they do the sleeves for the pro tour sure i mean they do make they make ultimately they make six one half dozen the other these are promo things. Oh my god! I can't wait for game codes. I can't, I can't wait for codes because this is what I've always wanted. This is literally what I've wanted for Magic Online forever. Yeah. Magic the Gathering Arena gets it. Okay, sure, whatever. You know that Hearthstone <laughs> money. Hashtag that Hearthstone money. All right. So moving on here, there was uh, there was a, not sort of an announcement. There was just some posting in social media of there's brand new cards. Wizards made brand new cards for certain employees, for essentially employee appreciation. And I, the number I heard was they made four of each and the employee got one and I, God knows where the other ones went off to. Um, but I'll bring them up here, and this is from Jeremy Knoll's Twitter because he, he did the good work of compiling them. Um, for whatever reason, they call them Heroes of the Realms. This sure. is largely about D&D and uh, rewarding D&D. D&D 5th Edition has been ridiculous. 
uh, has <laughs> has sold tons and tons of copies. Players are super super happy with it, um, and it's like that train just keeps on rolling. Like, and they've got the the D and D miniature stuff has been taken off as well. You know, all that stuff kind of plays together where you have the adventures and you have the miniatures you can use in those adventures and blah blah blah. So they did great. They got three cards all to their lonesome. God knows what these things will ultimately be, ultimately be worth if anyone tried to sell one of them, but. But right. let's talk about it here. First, there's a five-color dragon. All five colors of mana for a 6-6 six, six legendary dragon called Nira Hellkite Duelist. This is for, Beautiful. This is for Duel Masters. Gorgeous, yeah. You know, to reward Duel Masters. Um, and, uh, and so it has Flash, it has Fly and Trample and Haste, and when it enters the battlefield, the next time you would lose the game this turn, instead, draw three cards, and your life total becomes five. So... Obviously, ridiculously overpowered. It doesn't need to be anything because it doesn't yeah. really mean anything. But for the for the employee who got that one, uh, you know, congratulations. You have a sick I mean, dragon. It's gorgeous. It's full art. Um, you know, the, the, I, they must have commissioned artists to do these for these folks, which is very nice. Oh yeah. Uh, and all of them are super flavorful and neat. Obviously, all of these ne- none of these went through play testing. Um, Because this card is absurd, clearly. The Um, timing of this, though, you know, we're coming off of a a Dragon Commander deck, Commander 2017, you know, pairing this up with something like Ramos, which also wants you to play five colors, even doing this with just the Ur Dragon. And Um, obviously, none of these are, none of these are Commander legal because they have the Heroes of the Realm card backs. Um, So we don't know, I mean, obviously, if they play with their friends, they'll probably let them play. So you couldn't put it in a sleeve and, and still not use it? I mean, you could, but, okay. but I mean, there's four of them that exist in the world of each, or something <laughs> like that. So, like, you know, it's in any so case, good though. It is. It's 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 an amazingly great card, but uh, I I I would certainly be a little suspect if somebody brought one of these to the kitchen table. <laughs> um, it would, but it yeah, would, I, mean, I mean, the art's gorgeous. The full art. I mean, it's a and it's a great. Um, uh, 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 tribute to Duel Masters as well. Yeah, uh, I, I've heard, I'm getting from the chat here that this might not be new art, this might be reused art, I'm guessing it's obviously from Duel Masters. From Duel Masters, and, yeah. Some but fashion. put onto a magic card. Uh, yeah. Duel, Duel Masters was very similar to, uh, um, uh, not Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, what was the one they tried? Kajudo. Uh, Kajudo, yeah. Kajudo essentially was like yet another attempt to bring Duel Masters to the US and not suck. Yep. Didn't work out. Um, but it also had things like shields, and when people would you know, right. hit you, they would break through and break a shield. And so- I loved Kaijudo. I played Kaijudo like pretty, like as my second trading card game for about a year when I lived in Roanoke. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Jerry Thompson was uh, was big into it, and I was playing with a bunch of the folks down there. Uh, and yeah, I had a ton of fun with it. Um, yeah, I, I wish they did it work. It was surprisingly difficult. I remember uh, my friend Mike Cannon, who used to write for GatheringMagic.com and wrote for the Mothership for a little while. I remember he was teaching Kaijudo, and I remember there was a little table off to the corner in the magic area. This was uh, this was back when Theros came out, so this was a while ago. But I remember I went into it, you know, kind of treating it like Pokemon, thinking because there were animated pictures that, oh, LOL, this is going to be easy. And I just couldn't get the hang of it. I just consistently lost. And I was like, this this takes more skill than I realized. And It was a really was, good game, honestly. Yeah. You didn't need dice. You didn't need a pad and paper. Your life total was kept track by part of the game. So all you needed was the deck. That was one of the big selling points. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a good time with Kaijudo. I even won a, a, a Kaijudo commentators contest that I got a oh, free man. trip. To the, I got a free trip to Dallas for the Kaijudo equivalent of the Pro Dallas. Tour. Dallas. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was great. That's where the Pro Tour was. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, I made I made um, some. I mean, I made some Kaijudo content. It's not like I did. Yeah. I mean, I too enjoyed it, and you know, for what it's worth. I actually, I actually sold all my Kajudo cards to Jerry Thompson right before the uh, the game kind of so, oh, yeah, like so made that happen. But you know, he he loved the game. I know he really wanted it to succeed. Um, he just he did a great job building really cool decks and stuff. And, yeah, you know, and that that was super cool because that was happening in Roanoke. I mean, I would see him out there in the storefront just playing Kajudo all the time, and it was really fun. Our Wednesday night uh, before we did this show, I used to play on Wednesday nights uh, in Roanoke, and those Roanoke nightly Kajudo tournaments were. Pro- gotta have been top top two hardest in the world. <laughs> it was like me, Jerry, Todd Anderson, BBD, Brad Nelson. Brad Nelson. It was crazy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It was it was a good time for a little while, and I'm glad to see that there is at least a little bit of a a, um, a tribute here on on this Hellkite Duelist card. There you go. All right. So the next one up here is Chandra Gremlin Wrangler. 
which is a two red, two generic mana, three loyalty uh, Chandra Planeswalker with a plus one of create a two, two red gremlin creature token and minus two uh, Chandra Gremlin Wrangler deals X damage to target creature or player where X is the number of gremlins you control. Um, and interestingly, this has flavor text on it, which uh, right. I think is a pretty rare, rare occurrence, if not the only occurrence on the planeswalker. I think planeswalker. it's the only planeswalker with flavor text. And it says, uh, sure, I can set things on fire by myself, but teamwork can be fun, too. And this was <laughs> given to uh, Doug Beyer uh, at Wizards. And, uh, and again, really cool brand new artwork on the screen of like a little gremlin hanging out on Chandra's shoulder, which is awesome. Yeah. And, it, and that's all it does, what it's worth. It's not like I left out an ultimate. It literally just makes gremlins and burns things yeah. with gremlins. That's it. As opposed to the last card, this one is not good. This, this should just have two plus one abilities, probably. Oh, um, and just not change the text at all, and you have to just attack it to kill it. Um, it's a cool idea, though. Gremlin being a creature type now, thanks to uh, release the gremlins and whatnot. Right. So uh, it, this is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing that they did for their employees. You know, it's, this is a really good employee incentive thing. Now that you can like get cards that you have some sort of flavor attachment to, right. I think that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool thing to do. I mean. Yeah. And- yeah, it's it's weird because I mean one of the reasons that they had to stop sort of the judge program foils the way they were working is because you know it cost wizards ten cents, but you know for the judges it's worth hundreds of dollars. This is this this doesn't sort of cross that line because it's the company making something for the company's people, but this is essentially wizards giving these people multi thousand dollar bonuses. Yeah, like there's no doubt in my mind that any of these cards would sell for at least four figures just because. They're super crazy. Because of how rare they are, yeah. Yeah, like the only crazy, crazy rare. The, the other previous one of printed cards of various, uh, um, you know, promotions or trophies, if if, if you want to call them that, were 1996 World Champion mm-hmm. and super complicated, unpronounceable name dragon. Right. Um, <laughs> and then there were a couple of specialty cards for marriage proposals, I think. And the one uh, about- of various types. And, what was and they're about all it? they're all super expensive. They're all a billion dollars a piece now. Yeah. Even oh, yeah. the even the marriage proposal ones. Well, so I mean, yeah, this is definitely something uh, something that's that's in that vein. Didn't you were you were talking about sort of what the prices of certain foils were? You want to kind of mention what a, how much a foil grim monolith is these days? Oh geez, like uh, yeah. So a bunch of the foils from the oldest sets that had foils, Legacy, Destiny, Mercadian Masks jumped in price over the past couple months. Mm. Um, Foil Grim Monolith is $1,200 now. Uh, Jumped from like $250 to $1,200. Metal Worker (laughs) jumped up to some ridiculous number. I was going through a box of cards of mine and uh, and found a French Foil Replenish. Uh, And an English Foil Replenish is about $200 now. Wow. Um, And I still have somebody that somebody wanted mine. Um, on Twitter, I apologize. I haven't gotten back to you yet. I was going to take more photos of it, um, but yeah, a bunch of those old foils just jumped up in price. Magic cards that are that old are just all going to keep growing in price at weird rates. Not even exponential rates. They're just going to jump every once in a while. Speaking of prices, can we talk about the fact this isn't a paper thing? But can we talk about how online a Mox Opal? is more expensive than actual Moxin. Mox Opal goes for 60 plus dollars a piece right now. That's the crappy little Mox that's in all the affinity decks. Mox right. Pearl is only $15. Mox Ruby is $16. Sorry, Ruben. Uh, Mox <laughs> Sapphire is $36. You're, you're very cheap. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a Mox Opal is $17. Mox Jet is $17. It's insane to me that you could buy all of the actual Moxin for the cost of one box opal, I was just like, "This is wild." <laughs> well, thanks to our uh, one of our uh, you know chat members here, uh, I can now pronounce the crazy Japanese card, which is Shi Chi Fu Kujin. The Shi Chi Fu Kujin dragon. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. There was Splendid Genesis Proposal, Fraternal Exaltation. Um, yeah. And I think those were like the really weird, super crazy ones that Richard Garfield made back in the day. Yeah. So now we have, uh, you know, Chandra, Gremlin Chandra, basically. Right, Gremlin Chandra. Uh, okay, and, right. And, this, and this dragon. And then, of course, my favorite is the Dungeon Master. Nice. Next up, <laughs> it, like, it's literally just called Dungeon Master. It doesn't have, yeah. actually have a name, but it's a white and blue and two generic mana for a 1d4 plus one loyalty. Oh, my God. That's How cool is amazing. that? Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> that, that just is straight amazing. 
Uh, it's a it's a dungeon master planeswalker, of course. Uh, plus one target opponent creates a one one black skeleton creature token with quote when this creature dies, each opponent gains two life. Plus nice. one, roll a d twenty. If you roll a one, <laughs> skip your next turn because you just kicked yourself in the in the junk. Yep. yep. But if you roll a twelve or higher, draw a card. Right. At minus six. You get an adventuring party. Your party is a 3-3 red fighter with first strike, a 1-1 white cleric with lifelink, a 2-2 black rogue with hexproof, and a 1-1 blue wizard with flying. That I is that. awesome. Yeah. I love everything about this. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got the old, I think this is from the old TV show, is the art. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, I think from the, the classic Dungeons & Dragons Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. Do they even have Saturday morning cartoons oh anymore? My God, Not right. anymore. It's the DM from the 80s D&D cartoon. Yeah, I'm pretty wow. sure. That's yeah, insane. So I, it's amazing. Um, yeah, the fact that you roll a D4 to determine its loyalty is hilarious. I mean, the flavor of this card is just through the roof. I, this is the one I want. I want this in my cube. <laughs> so Mike Burns on the D&D team... Uh, Mike Merles. Uh, Mike, really? Oh, Mike, Mike Merles. No, you're right. Uh, Mike Burns is actually the guy who drew it. Mike yeah. Merles is the guy who got it. So, yeah. uh, so that is terrific. And I can only, again, I can only imagine how unbelievably sweet that would be to get your own custom card as a reward. Like those guys are going to be at Wizards just forever at this point. Like, yeah, man, done. You made me my own yeah. card. This is amazing. Uh, te- and I, I think that it is technically uh, a planeswalker with two types so if you have a play if you play a planeswalker with master or a planeswalker with dungeon then you have two of the same but that doesn't matter anymore because we have the loyalty rule now so but it's really funny because uh i, I just love that everything about this card is just perfect for D and and, and it's mike also Merle, mike Merles is great um he's a great follow on twitter he's super entertaining right and he's not um uh i'm sorry i just lost my train of thought on that one anyway yeah, Let's keep moving. Uh, so those were the D&D promos, which was cool. Um, but we're going to move on here to my next topic because I closed the tab because I'm good at this. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move on here to Gather the Townsfolk. So uh, we lost one of our own this week, uh, t- tragically. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, Gadiel's Lifer is, well, was, um, an unbelievable magic player. Like, you know, when I got to go to Valencia... Uh, I got to hang out at Pro Tour Valencia. This is 2007. Um, you can go back and watch the Magic Show. Uh, it's one of the first, you know, it's, it is my first ever Pro Tour Magic Show. Um, but I actually got to hang out with him in the city of Valencia, like walking around, and he knew you know, he could speak for perfect Spanish, and he took us to all the little holes in the wall, and we had sangria, and it was just, it was perfect. Uh, we had tapas and stuff. Um, Gadiel was the closest dude I've ever met in my life to a real-life Goodwill hunting. Like, he was crazy smart like he won a pro tour at 16 he won a gp at 14 like yeah. he won and not just that he won the, the hardest pro tour of all time kamigawa block gifts you could never make one misplay or you would lose you had to yeah. know exactly what to do in the mirror he was doing crazy stuff that nobody else was doing like gadiel was an unbelievable match player and the thing that was rough about it at least for me was that he didn't really care that much. Like, his yeah. attitude, you read his articles, you wrote some articles, go check those out. You know, his attitude just came through because, you know, he was good. He knew he was good, and that's a thing. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a point where the arrogance, cockiness, whatever, just becomes to, like, you know what, he can back it all up. Like, yeah. he, he's just winning magic because he, he wants to do that. He's picking up decks and, like, top eighting GPs because he just picked up the deck, like, because reasons. You know, like yeah. Gadiel was a monster, and he was, and, and like, and he 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 dies in his twenties. Like, how old was he? 27, 28? Like, yeah, something like twenty eight years old. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah. uh, I'll bring up on the screen now. Um, there's a there's a fundraiser uh, for his family to get to to, to bring him back home. Uh, because it's already I- exceeded its goal. The goal was ten thousand. When I looked at this in preparation for the show, it was at over fifteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's from you know eighty five donors. So eighty five donors raised fifteen k. That's that's quite a bit. But you know, uh, and and I'll share the link here in the chat here in a moment. But you know, they basically say he passed away unexpectedly in his sleep. That's terrible. His parents are still living, and let me tell you, as a parent, that's the last thing in the world you ever want. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy, is to have your you outlive your children because that is that is crazy. Um, but yeah, but Gadiel was amazing. He was awesome. He was crazy smart. He was super good at magic, 
and yeah. uh, and uh, you know, and ultimately, like, you know, I, I miss the idea that maybe one day he'd come back. You know, At last I'd heard, I had heard from AJ Soccer um, that he was at the Team GP in Louisville and was just kind of hanging out. Didn't really know why he was there, kind of thing. But mm-hmm. you know, he he was hanging out and talking with people and discussing the new nationals structure with people theoretically to find the path of least resistance probably to get back into competitive magic maybe oh, make man. a ben stark or brian kibler style return um if there was anyone that i could say would have been in the hall of fame had he stayed in magic 100 percent, it would have been gadiel's lifer he won a pro tour at age 16 like what else do you and not just any pro tour like we said when japanese magic was at the top and no one could ever beat the japanese pros during the most skill intensive uh, mirror match time uh, of all time with the gifts, uh, the four color gift stack. Um, he, he inspired a generation of new writers uh, because of his, his he, he had this way with words that was, even as just a young person, with his complete lack of filter and also his ridiculous confidence um, the way that he could translate that onto the page was amazing. Let me and, let me let me read a little a little excerpt because sure. this, this is a good one. Um, <laughs> this is from the the article of his called "The JSS Money Machine Is Dead." Long live the Pro Tour. Okay, right. Uh, he says, um, uh, "I had a decision to make. If I tried my hand at the Pro Tour, I'd be throwing away two more years of free money championships. Most people call them the JSS champs, but I prefer free money." I won't lie, playing eight rounds against idiots and getting $1,000 to show for it's nice, but it was getting pretty boring. You know, as you do, just making a grand every time you show up. Right. So so many of my friends were also qualified. I chose to go to New Orleans and play for the glory. One last bit here. Since it was my first pro tour, I decided I would actually test for this event, something I hadn't really done before. Like, that, the boy was just crazy. It's amazing. Crazy. Wow. Good at magic. And it's, yep. it's ridiculous. Yeah. He was so smart. Uh, Ted Knutson, who was the former uh, editor, former, 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 former editor of Star City Games way back, the second ever editor of Star City Games, yeah. um, wrote a memoriam piece about Gadiel because uh, they had actually been uh, business partners working together over the past year and a half or so yeah. um, and talking about just how smart and passionate and just the way he thought about the world was so different. Um, it is very... It, it's just hard to think about that this is a reality uh, anymore. You know, we talked about, Evan and I at least, I don't know if we talked about it on the show, but when Peter Zagetti died, yeah. uh, Peter's PTR was a legendary figure in Magic, but in a different way. He was sort of like a grinder who had an attitude and was suspended a bunch. And, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a top-level pro. He was just somebody that everybody knew. This was a top level pro. It's 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 staggering to think about that, that we just won't have the chance to see if he'll ever make his comeback like we were just talking oh, about. Man, and what a tournament report that would be for him yeah. to come back and to write about it. It'd he he inspired I mean, he was the one who I think like he's he's the first one to write that style of article where Tim Ayton's articles came from and Fedge, Jeff Cunningham's articles come from, and AJ Soccer's articles come from, and then later on, eventually, that became people like me and and like Mark Nestico and people who also tried to be entertaining in in a way that was different with their magic articles that we hadn't seen up to that point. Gadiel was the guy; he was like the progenitor of that, which was you know for a 16 year old to do that. In addition to winning a pro tour, in addition to breaking all these formats and and just being the best ever. Uh, at, at, at the, the gift mirror. Um, right. Yeah, it was crazy. And it's just, it, it reminded me of that. There's that scene in Goodwill Hunting where he's like, you know, do you see this? This is easy for me. This yeah. is nothing. And I was just like, you know, like you're doing so crazy well. And like, you, you don't want to keep going. You don't want to have this amazing career. He's like, ah, I don't know. You know, he's like, I mean, you know, it's good and he's good at it, but you know, he could, he could do something else, you know? Right. There was always that attitude. It was crazy. So rest in peace, Gadiel. You were awesome. It was great to hang out with you in Spain, and uh, and you'll be missed. So, Cardboard Crack, speaking of things unfortunately going away, uh, Cardboard Crack officially announced that he's, uh, that the creator, uh, I know it's he because I actually know the guy, but, uh, but Cardboard Crack has announced that he is going to take a break um, from doing so, 
and this is one of the one of the sort of the quintessential uh, uh, comic strips for magic. You know, the the idea that cardboard crack was always sort of taking the pulse of the community, was able to show it in a funny, interesting way using stick figures. You know, he he created books that he sold. He's got these yeah. tokens that are animated. Like he he built his own little industry around this. Uh, but he said, you know, and 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 trust me, I know exactly how he feels. Because, you know, nary a week or two goes by when someone goes like, hey, bro, where's, uh, yeah. where's, that, where's that forgotten lore? Huh? Where's that, <laughs> hey, where's that magic lore. show? Where's that, yeah. where's that show that, you know, I liked so much? And, and you know, I, I certainly took the time to make one for Ixalan for pre-release. Um, and it's not that I don't want to. It's usually, you know, there's all family. We're doing stuff. That's awesome. You know, it's and there's guilt. There's a lot of guilt. There's this weird, like, creator guilt that you yeah. get of your, like, and and, and the, I know what he means when like he doesn't want to face it. I'm just like yeah. I don't always want to like read about how like disappointed everyone is that you're not doing the thing that they enjoyed. And you're like, yeah. that's it's it's very it's a weird. I would say I would call it very unique in terms of like what we do and what other people do in terms of making things and people having those sort of aspirations for you. You know, you're not doing that thing. Why are you not doing that thing? Well, there's Why also the feeling. Thing? There's also the feeling of if you. You know, you try to leave the door open, but if you say that it's over, then it's over. You know, it's one thing to kind of, you know, leave it open-ended and be like, I'll be back. I'll totally be back. Like, one of these days, I'll be back. But when you write the actual goodbye post or you write the actual last tweet, it's really happening. And I, and I see that sometimes a lot with, with death. You know, you, you know, if you can just not, if it isn't, ha if you don't acknowledge it and you don't get to that point, it's not real. And, and yeah. it's, it's kind of interesting that we segue into, into this. Yeah. It's, I mean, I didn't really plan it that way. Yeah. Um, I'm really but... sad about this one. Um, I remember when I first interacted with cardboard crack, I was still doing the deck tease speaking of things that have passed away. <laughs> right. um, and I had I wanted to know who the person was behind the strip. And so I had sent them an email and I was like, hey, I'd really like to get to know you. And he was very he was very interested in keeping his anonymity. He was like, yeah. you know, I really don't want to break the fourth wall. I really want to kind of stay behind the comic, but I love what you do and it's nothing against you or your show. And then he sent me a couple of free books, which I still have, and they were very lovely. I've also been tagged uh, many times, uh, not by him, but by his readers. Um, I remember there was a Reed Duke comic where there was a young yep. lady who talked about putting her boyfriend in a wig yep. and he was like, I don't want to wear the wig tonight and me being a Reed Duke fan, everybody tagged me in that one. <laughs> Every time it got reposted, everybody tagged me in it. There was also a post he did around, I think it was Sweetest Day or Valentine's Day where somebody gets shot with a Cupid's arrow and then they fall in love with Dredge and again, I got tagged in that one too. And so, um, yeah, he just had a way of talking about things that, you know, were going on in the community in very unique ways and, you know, I'm always really sad when any content creator kind of goes away or, or I have a lot of respect for people that can go on as long as they do um, because there's a lot that goes into into making content. You know, Polish Tamales was, you know, a popular comic person that we saw for a while and, and haven't heard much of lately. And um, there's still Durfington, but I feel like Durfington doesn't put out as much anymore. And right. it's always sad when somebody, you know, has been creating for a long time and suddenly they stop. Well, I mean, our friends, you know, over what's uh, it's game nights, right? They do yeah. the uh, command cast. Yep. And they just mm -hmm. done, they just did a new episode where it wasn't Commander. It was right. Two-Headed Giant. And like people are like losing their minds. <laughs> you know, and Josh Lee Kwai is like, I guess I can only make one type of content for the right, rest of my exactly. life. And yeah. can't make anything else ever. And it's like, no, man, you, you, you can. It's okay. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's, it's a weird thing, especially with free content or free content. Um, where, you know, it's, it's people feel entitled sometimes to the type of content that they expect. Um, and that's, that's certainly a side effect of being content creators, um, you know, where, where you have this sort of backlash of, but, but I loved the newsening, or I loved the deck tease, or I loved the set reviews with Brad, or I loved et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's like, yeah, but we're doing this other thing we like now. And it's well, it's like, a catch-22. It's like, right. you know, they, they like to say that you're not growing and that you're not evolving and that you're becoming stale, you know, or predictable. And then when you try to change it up, it's, well, we liked you better when you were X. And, you know, it's one of the few, one of the lines that I like to use is, what do you want me to do? Like, I don't, you know, right. there's just certain things in life where you feel very torn. You and you're like, you know, me? yeah, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and there's just a lot to take away from this cardboard crack thing, but I, I'm very sad to see them go. And I, you know, I think going back to the nature of the magic community, you can always come back. And so, you know, I, I would like to think that maybe they'll sort things out or maybe life will be less hectic and we'll see them again because they've definitely made an impact. Like you said, sleeves, play mats being featured on some of the biggest websites we have, having agreements with them. That's very rare for any creator, regardless of yeah. what you do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I had a I had a personal connection with with uh, with cardboard crack that I wanted to quickly touch on. Um, I'm not sure if I'm can take credit for quote unquote discovering oh. card co- cardboard crack, but I certainly gave them I think their first major uh, um, platform, hmm. which was when we when I took over the Star City Games newsletter. Evan tasked me with taking over the Star City Games newsletter at one point. And we were looking for new and exciting ways to make the newsletter unique. Um, and I stumbled upon this Cardboard Crack article, uh, or article, uh, comic. And it was different than everything that had been going on. A lot of the magic comics that had been happening at the time were high art, but mm-hmm. not great writing. They were really artistic and fascinating art, uh, artistically, but the jokes weren't there. Um, and this was much more in the style of XKCD, you know, like stick figures with actually clever writing. And I know a lot of people like to poo-poo the, the writing in Cardboard Crack as like, oh, I don't think, but whatever. But um, I didn't actually say anything there. I don't know what I, why I did it. <laughs> um, but they, they actually had clever one-liners and like yeah. interesting setups and knockdowns and, and stuff like that. And as a writer myself... You know, my my sh- my interviews innings were very similar. I felt I felt a kindredness with cardboard crack, where I didn't have the production value of you know uh, of some of the shows that were being produced at the time. Um, you know, like really high editing quality and things like that. But I could write, um, and and so that carried me through. And so I felt very similar. Uh, to that with with cardboard crack and so I brought uh, brought it to Evan's attention and it was like yeah I'll see what they want and then we put it in the in the newsletter and then it explode he exploded from there um, got featured on home pages of all of the major uh, magic sellers came out with half a dozen to a dozen books tokens which you can still buy stickers that you can still get um, yeah he, he went gangbusters and uh, couldn't be <laughs> couldn't be happier yeah. So, I mean, you know, if anything, it's it's always nice to have that bow on it, you know, and uh, I certainly don't think or well, I certainly hope that we haven't heard the last of Cardboard Crack. Sure. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you just need to go recharge some batteries. Sometimes you need to go do something different. Sometimes you just need to stop doing certain things for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So let's keep moving here. Uh, Aaron, you have this announcement thing, <laughs> the thing that you're doing now. Yeah, yeah, I've been sitting on this for a couple of weeks now. Uh, So as of today, uh, I released a a blog post and a podcast episode over at Card Hoarder. Uh, I've accepted the position as their new community manager, uh, which is really, really exciting. I quit my day job. I'd been working for JP Morgan for the past seven years, which is a pretty cushy job. I was I was a home equity underwriter for a long time and I decided to quit. My last day with them was yesterday and today was my first day as the community manager for Card Hoarder and this nice. is really, really exciting. This has been my dream. I think for a lot of content creators, the dream is to sort of get to a point where you can do this. You know, there's a there's a, a rare pantheon of people that get to that point. You know, Marshall Seckla famously quit his job. The professor uh, was laid off, I believe, or something right. happened with his tenure, but it's not every day that a content creator can do this. And so um, to, to get to a point after five years of three podcasts and several appearances, you know, with Wizards and things like that, I, I've gotten to this point. And I had I had two interviews that I had to get through and several emails and I was Google searched and they did the whole thing. And it was real. It was a real interview. It wasn't like I, yeah. you know, it wasn't something where I simply just threw my name in there and I got in simply on that. I, I had to, they called my references. This was a real job. And so um, I'll be helping them kind of tighten the screws a little bit, get the team, the the paper team in order, the online team in order, getting their site tightened up a little bit. Um, I'll be traveling to events to represent them. Uh, so you'll see me at more GPs. I'll be at a couple pro tours. Uh, I'm really, really excited. This is really living the dream for me. And I hope it all works out. Yay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. And from, uh, <laughs> from viewer Samuel Stahl, you really put the quit in home equity. I saw it. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's I a great really one. Did. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. Being able to, to, to make magic 
you know, or, or even just be around magic full time is an interesting uh, uh, lifestyle. Um, you know, Evan has done it before. I've done it before. Evan's still doing it. Um, and yeah, it's it's. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Obviously, um, it's it's. They 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 couldn't have picked somebody better for the job, Absolutely. unless they picked me. But <laughs> I didn't apply. No I'm kidding. They they probably would have picked you anyway. You're better at organization. Yeah. By a wide I margin. To, I'm sure <laughs> yeah, you'll do. I've got my notebook of my to-do list right here. So. Yes. Right. Yeah. There you and go. So, you, so yeah, the, the, and the fact that they're going to send you to the events, I think, is a really uh, um, excellent thing as well. So if the fo folks who are watching are going to be able to see much more of Aaron traveling around the country. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Although they're sending me to Phoenix next month, and I don't really do well in hot climates, so... <laughs> stay inside stay inside yep. yep just go from one air conditioned space to another which is what most of floridians do for what it's worth we go from yeah. one space air conditioned to another directly to the car ac on max you know <laughs> into building exactly. slam shut you know don't stay out yeah. stay away from the day star um that said so yeah when we get our when we get our third sponsor for the show they'll hire me there we go and then we'll have the, the trifecta there we go um, <laughs> I'm happy being lazy. I'm normally not. <laughs> You're I'm not good. lazy. I'm good where I'm at. Okay. Wow. Well, I mean, living off living off this industry is really interesting. Um, yeah. For me, you know, like I was, it was it was all magic, and then magic with SCG was all magic, 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 and then cool stuff. I get like the hobby industry, not just magic but yeah. what does pokemon do like what happens with hero clicks and what happens with star wars destiny and hey look there's final fantasy tcg like i get to look at all of those things and i get to look at it through this prism of having been immersed in mtg for so long and you know there are there's people out there who feel like you know selling singles is bad for trading card games like that's right. a thing that they do and you're like no, that's that's bananas. Why would you ever not want to do that? That's that helps the game, you know. But stuff like that, where you're like, wow, you see how Wizards does it, and then you can kind of see how all these other companies do it, and all these other board game manufacturers do it, and that's another whole sort of culture and subculture in and of itself, right. which is really interesting. That like it's a cottage industry. There's not a ton of money, and the people who are in it are just like crazy passionate, um, and all that stuff. So it's you know, being able to be able to to live off gaming is great. It's also yes. nice to be able to apply everything that you've basically been doing as a content creator to full-time work. I remember during my second job interview, they had talked about doing like a charity initiative and they were like, yeah, what if we did this thing and and how would we promote it? And I was like, well, maybe you'd have some of like your bigger guys, like, you know, Joe Lasek on podcast. And it was so cute. They were like, how much, how much would that cost? And I was like, um, nothing. Like, <laughs> they, no, like yeah. they, they were gonna have to pay podcasts to have their people on there and being a podcaster is like if you literally just like have them go up and say hi i'm yeah. joe lissette i'd like to be on your show who's going to turn joe lissette down and so you know there are things that i know i know promotional cycles i know branding i know hashtags i know you know again we talk about you know what businesses shouldn't do on the show you know and certainly i know like hey don't tweet that don't say this and so it's nice to apply just sort of what you've been doing every day to a business and to a broader scope and um, you know, the we take what we do for granted, but then there's people who don't know anything about building a following, who don't know anything about, um, you know, things like that. And it's like, hey, this knowledge is useful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's terrific. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and by the way, this will not be affecting your Magic Mike's no, schedule at no, all. God, no. Just in case anyone was wondering. No. But if she goes to Phoenix, we might have a little <laughs> tater swap. Okay, but well, he's he's tatered how many times? Like, I think I, I I think I've earned at least one tater. Like, we need we need a third sponsor to be able to hire me so that I don't <laughs> have to resort to the potato. So he can afford good internet. <laughs> Please go to our Patreon and help. Yep. Ruben. Brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc. You know what you need to do, Evan. And reasonable internet. <laughs> Remember that black and white video that you did for Magic Online, Evan? You need to do a oh, yeah. version for Ruben. Very Christian children's fun, like very black and white. Ruben yeah. being sad in different locales of like, this is yeah. Ruben. Sarah Preston. McLaughlin music in right. the background. <laughs> The, like the, the, I mean, there was th that memory of being in the studio and like Brad's head on my lap and me like yeah. stroking his hair. Or, like that won't ever go away. Did that, that's always that in that there. video had a huge following. I have a I have a section of my friends who identify as bears. They they are they are gay gentlemen who identify as bears. They ate that video up. Let me just tell you, <laughs> there was a niche market for that video, and you hit that. Like wow, they loved it. Yeah, that's terrific. So yeah. bears companion. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta cater to the bears, man. 
Yeah. Wow. That would be hers. So we go from one very, very positive thing to something not so positive. Uh, there was a tweet that came out, and, and I saw it, and I was like, that's really weird. Uh, uh, someone said, this is horrible. Wizards Magic, yeah. you know, Wizards Magic Twitter account and Wizards Magic EU account withdrew support for, for specifically Legacy for yet another European tournament series. Um, I, I really need to know exactly what beyond Planeswalker Point modifiers is involved in this. Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, today, they, they, you know, the Dutch Open series said that Wizard contacted us about the premium event support on our main events for upcoming editions. Uh, all formats except Legacy will be supported. So there's like there's like two sides here, which is if it's only the Planeswalker points, why is it a big deal? And yeah. if it's just Planeswalker points, what's the big deal? Like, yeah. where, where are you at here? So, I mean, I, I quoted the tweet. And I was like, Wizards, what is it that you're upset with here? What is it mm-hmm. they're gaining that you're mad about? What is it that what effort do you have to put in that is, you know, above and beyond at least some sort of idea? Because again, to scalpel out legacy after you have iconic masters, after you have you know sets that are reprinting really old cards, Swords of Plowshares was in that set, you know, you have Eternal Masters, Force of Will is on the box. And you're printing these older cards so they can be more accessible, yet you're not going to support the format that lets you play them. Yeah. I don't understand Ju- it. Yeah. And Julian Nab, he's the young man who won the vintage MKM this past weekend. And Julian just right. always wins. Like, I feel like every time I turn around, he's top eighting something or winning something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does feel like a weird, like, you know, go away, no don't kind of situation where like, you know, they they don't want people to play, play Legacy because in theory, they don't necessarily make any money from it. But then they're releasing sets like Eternal Masters where they're printing Icarids, they're printing Force of Wills. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that, you know, you're you're making no money from this. You have no interest in this. And then you aim products at us and expect us to come back and buy them. It doesn't work that way. I also think there's a weird lesson here in terms of denying that formats don't exist. You know, we kind of saw this with Modern for a while where, you know, we didn't have the Modern Pro Tour. You know, people weren't, they weren't really helping out with Modern events. Again, they were trying to make it all about Standard. La, 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 no one plays Modern. Now we're at a point where Modern is more successful than Standard. You have, you know, SEG cutting Standard events to make room for Modern. I think Wizards had to sort of concede that fact and give us back the Modern Pro Tour. You know, I feel like it's going to come back and bite them when you pretend 10 formats that are doing well don't exist. Um, it's just bad business. Like, I don't understand why you would... There, There is an audience for this. There are people out there who want to give you their money, um, and I don't I don't understand. It, it, I'm in the same boat as you, Evan. So th- yeah. so thanks much to Pharmacist Judge in the uh, the Twitch yeah. chat, who, who has pasted here essentially what the difference is. Uh, they have increased the Planeswalker Points multiplier from 3x to 4x. Wizards may issue an exclusive digital art asset for advertising for the event. Upon approval, this asset may also be used for special giveaways like deck boxes or playmats. And they so, don't get any of that now. And they got nothing. Right. They got zilch. Right. And it's just, and well, I mean, you get, you, you get your in one addition, X In addition to removing, well, look, Planeswalker points, especially for Legacy, are very important at Legacy GPs because the first three rounds of a Legacy GP are the literal Wild West. Like, you can play <laughs> against literally anything. You need as many buys in Legacy GPs as you can right. in order to actually get to an, a, a semblance of a metagame. Um, but it's mostly the principle of the thing, Right. Like, why would they take away, like, what does it cost Wizards in terms of the Planeswalker points? I hadn't known about the digital assets, but really, how much does that, in the grand scheme of things, cost Wizards? It it depends, right? Whether it's artwork that they have sitting around, it's whether artwork they give it to you or they don't. Like, they they have the the complete flexibility to not give you anything. To just be like, we're going to give you the multiplier, sorry, you don't get the art this time, the end. Like, it's, it's their prerogative. So... It's it's just strange to me, and even if there is some amount of cost in you know providing the digital asset and providing the advertising, which there is, it certainly doesn't feel like it's enough to to warrant the feel bad of these legacy players and to again scalpel out legacy. Right. It's yeah. it seems like a self fulfilling prophecy where people where Wizards is saying we're not going to support your event, then the event doesn't get supported. Right. Then that is impacted negatively some way. Right. Right. And then later, people say, oh, look, less people showed up for this Legacy event. I guess all the people in, Le- you know, Legacy's dying. Well, I wonder why it's dying. <laughs> when you don't support it, at, when you don't support one of your four formats, 
then this is what happens. It's a self-fulfilling you know, prophecy, it, essentially. Yeah, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And again, we also had, we just had Iconic Masters, which, you know, could have been glanced at originally as being like, oh, this is for Legacy and Vintage. It wasn't. It was for Commander. Like, we all knew that it was Commander Masters or Casual Masters, but those those names wouldn't sell, mm -hmm. and so you need to call it Iconic Masters. But when you when when Vintage and Legacy die after their years of dying, because all I've heard for the past decade is that, oh, Legacy's dying, and it just hasn't. Um, weird. Weird how the format stays alive because people <laughs> keep playing it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when those go away, then you'll have no choice but to call your Iconic Masters Commander Masters and Casual Masters. So, you know, there's another self-fulfilling prophecy for you. This is just, like, super weird. And they also keep doing this to Europe specifically. Yeah. We, we we talked about the MKM series in a previous episode a couple months ago, um, where their, uh, uh, I believe it was their vintage event got messed up somehow. Um, I don't recall specifically. Um, somebody who, who, who watches this show more reliably than I do is going to have to go back and check me on that. But, but yeah, they, it seems like Europe gets screwed over a lot more uh, on this type of issue uh, than, than the American series. Yeah, I don't know. It just it feels like you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like this, at least be able to come back with some amount of explanation other than we just didn't want you to do that anymore. Like I mean, like right? What? I don't get it. I don't. I just don't understand it. And when I don't understand things, I like to highlight them. So ideally, maybe we will get some of that understanding. Maybe we will get some yeah. of that explanation because yeah, because oh, I've also heard nothing from Wizards of the Coast on. This oh yeah, thing, right? that's the other troubling thing is there has been silence on this. And right. like this tweet was from. How long ago? Uh, but this happened a year ago, week. too, I think from the same series. I, I recall Julian tweeting something out similarly last year that they had also pulled the support. And, you know, you just got crickets. And it's like now with there being no Helen or anything, I think Lee was like, oh, yeah, forward it to this email, which you know no one's going to read. And it's just like, you know, why are we not? What are we hiding here? I don't understand. You have no active face of the, of the premier organized play. And... I know that we've heard that they're hiring somebody and it takes a long time, but we have no one to talk to about this and no one who will try to at least give us some semblance of where Wizards is coming from because we just don't know. And we need that Helen-esque figure. And I just I feel like we need it sooner than later because stuff like this keeps happening and we just don't have anybody to talk to about it right now. And that was one of the beauties of Helen was that she was active and she'd get out there and, you know, she would she would brave the weather and the storm of, you know, hatefulness or angry or, you know, yeah. upset. She would make that and she'd be like, look, this is why we're doing these things. And maybe you can disagree with it, but at least we got something. But yeah. we got nothing. So. Yeah, the fact that there's no director of organized play right now is something. Well, not to not to drone on too much in the in the negativity world, but <laughs> wizards. Um, sometimes, sometimes it goes back to back, and magic judges. When it rains, it pours. Yeah, from from Reddit six days ago, one day after our last show, uh, a a level two judge posted and said, "Hey, uh, magic judges have had no exam and certification website." Uh, for like five months plus, and he's sick what? of it. For That's months, crazy. you have to, in order to get <clears throat> certified, you have to like go ask the regional coordinator to go cull questions by themselves because there's no way to, they don't have a, a, a rules policy question database uh, any longer. Um, so uh, the the one well, he says one example of an ad hoc process taking place now is that no judge, prospective judge, player, TO, anybody can generate judge exams from the now inaccessible rules slash policy question database for themselves. WOTC expects them to email or submit some sort of online form to their region's dedicated volunteers in charge of certification for a copy of one of the exams. This process was put, was a measure put into place to handle a planned three week downtime that started in March and we're in September. Right. Yeah, I can attest to this. My friend Chris, uh, who is one of my co-hosts on the Girlfriend Bracket, uh, they recently uh, took their L1 test and passed their L1 test, and they did not get a judge shirt, you know, the official black dress mm -hmm. shirt with the patch, because of the website being down. And I remember Chris just coming up with whatever black shirts they had on hand um, because they couldn't get it. And I just it was just like, it was so wild to me. I was like, what? And then I remember the bit about tests taking a while, too. And it just seems like for an organization that really events kind of live or die by, you know, we need judges, you know, that this is sort of taken a back seat is like, why isn't this more of a priority? <laughs> right. I, I mean, this this to me, 
at least serves from, again, we're on the outside. We don't know what's going on on the inside internally for this. But look, uh, now that I have the perspective of the hobby industry, the Magic Judges are amazing. The Magic yeah. Judge program is absolutely incredible. And any other game company would cut off their left arm to get anything close to what the Magic Judge community is right now. That's it good. is crazy they are passionate there's a ton of them all over the place you know they work really hard they, they form their own communities they create updates for every set release you know all these things because you know try to find a judge for like you know final fantasy tcg like you're yeah. like oh we have to like you know train and train the employee to know the rules so that we can get right. there somehow but with magic you know you go you want to run, run a big event they have systems in place to allow you to get people who can actually organize and make that thing happen and this to me just feels like you know like wizards going like eh, we'll get to it when we get to it you know they actually uh they actually tried to sort of turn it back on but then something like terrible happened like it was broken in some fashion and they turned it back off after like one day and said well we'll be back in in on halloween we'll see you on halloween so the, the this silliness uh, needs to end this is ridiculous and i hate that yeah. the judge program is suffering in this way because again there is no game that I know of that has a competitive aspect that would not kill for the Magic Judge program. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, well, we have, first of all, we have several uh, folks, uh, specifically Pharmacist Judge, who you can ask uh, about all the resources. Um, with this lack of a centralized location uh, at, at the moment, uh, plenty of folks in both of the chats, I'm sure, would be able to help. But I have lots of thoughts on this. Um, one of them is a tinfoil hat theory that is 100% not true. But part of me, when I, when I started reading this, thought to myself, I wonder if this has anything to do with the judge pay lawsuit. Um, because running a website that trains and organizes your judges might conflict with the claim that judges are independent contractors. Um, I don't think that that's the case because there are lots of places that have volunteers uh, that have you know that have handbooks and, and and resources and stuff for their for their members. So I don't think that that's true. Well, uh, but it is just a thought that I had. Well, one of the one of the reasons that I mean, the part of all why this has all come up is because for profit companies can't have volunteers. So what you sure. have essentially is like there's now crew members and now there's like staff. Sure, you and have that's to... why I don't think this has anything to do with that. But mm -hmm. it's it, it does it, it occurred to me therefore it could occur to someone else to be like oh by the way there are official resources on the official website for these judges who you say are not your employees in any case um tinfoil hat is firmly on the head on that one yeah that's <laughs> that's not a thing don't worry about that but i will say that um not having a centralized resource for judges is a big problem mm -hmm. because specifically for the practice tests i remember when i was studying to just do an l1 that obviously I was at the Star City Games Center, I had 85 judges I could talk to. And that's something that the judge program is amazing at, yeah. is apprenticeship, um, mentorship, just learning by just sitting there and asking questions. And there are a ton of resources out there. And of course, talking to your regional, regional coordinator is a step in that process, but not having a centralized hub where ever I want to be a magic judge, what's my first step? That's all I need. I need to go to magicjudges.co.uk to learn how to be to where my next step is, and then they tell me to go to my regional coordinator. The fact that that step one isn't there means I have to skip to step two, and that's like a big step to skip to. So that I mean, I bet that they just lose people who are like, I'm thinking about being a judge, and then they like start searching for how to be a judge, and it's like you have to go find the regional coordinator yourself, and then you have to do this, and then you have to do this, and they're just like. Ah, oh, I only have so many hours in the day. Why can't there just be a button on a website, right? Apply. It, yeah, there would be, I would Resources. imagine, we've probably lost 10% of the applicants that wanted to be magic judges just because there isn't that simple first step over the past five months. That that would be my, my, my guess. Maybe. I mean, again, for me, the, the, another part of this is that, you know, it, it's clear they have some fantastic... Uh, sort of, they have a fantastic digital team that's working on MTG Arena, <laughs> and maybe hey, the I'm other like, team you ever went to the Magic Judge Center website. It looked like it was from 1995, like another thing that Wizards of the Coast puts on the internet. But my point is that it's like just turn that back on. That was good enough. All I need is paper and buttons. Like all I need is put your name here, <laughs> click button. We'll email you something. Right. That's all I need. Generate test. I have a yeah, test I'm now. I'm not even doing anything particularly interesting. I just need a PSAT. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
it's it, it's tough and it's again you know we're not not trying to pile on Watsy too much but like stuff like this is the weird sort of tangential things that do longer lasting damage than is worth the the amount of money to like to fix them if you fix them you're going to save more than the long term damage that they're that they're you know in, uh, inducing in the game essentially um, I feel but that's me okay so uh, we had a new magic story today. And it was all about Vraska. And Vraska it's all as about a pirate. The word sorry, spoilers. I'll have to keep going. It's all about the word butthole. But without no, being the word butthole. No, it's not. It, it's a family friendly. It was, it was pre, uh, so is Wizards of the Coast.com. Hello. If Wizards.com can say it, I can say it. Thoughts? Uh mm. It's what we're talking about, Evan. Fine. Just go right. on. So Vraska says the word asshole in today's magic story. Oh my god. Oh dear. This is a for me a very sort of seminal moment that Wizards has never in my experience and please prove me wrong. Wizards has never used this language in a magic story before. Uh maybe in a book, maybe in one of the novels, maybe. I don't I never read them so I don't know, but uh, certainly, in any of the stories I've ever seen, they've never actually had them curse. Um, so you know this, and also the story was like really weird. It's like I didn't Nicol, like the story. Nicol Bolas taught Vraska like how to be a pirate or something, but he yeah. learned it because he was bored. Yeah. So she he sends her he offers to the opportunity to go on this weird quest, and he like beams the ability to to sail a ship into her into her mind. And he's talking to her through her mind and reading her thoughts, and this just didn't even sound like the same Varaska. You know, if you go back and look at previous stories, um, I'm looking at the Pride of the Crawl story from May of this year. You know, I never once got the impression, and and maybe this is me interpreting the stories differently, but I didn't get the impression that Varaska wanted to lead or that she wanted to rule. Like, you know, I got the impression that she was very much the mercenary. You know, she's counseling this one crawl guy who feels that his race is not being taken seriously. You know, and she's kind of enjoying taking on the role of the manipulator, kind of pulling the strings here. I felt like I was just reading an entirely different character here. Like, this did not feel faithful to the character for me and and her calling jace the word it just didn't sound like her either like it just it just didn't and then there's a mention of her where she's talking about putting on flats if you look at the original picture of, of Veraska the unseen she's barefoot she's covered in fungus and stuff and a dress and like when have we ever known her to wear heels like it just was really there's a lot of ha huh moments for me and it just didn't feel faithful to the character at all which which is a shame because i love Veraska. i have the really rare play map from europe that has her on it i was really excited to see her in this set and in this story and i don't know who this character is but it feels very different for me and not in a i don't want i'm not trying to say that you know we talked earlier in the show about you shouldn't grow and you shouldn't change and i'm, I'm definitely happy to see some growth in the character but this feels like a real uh, curveball for me it seems a little forced i don't know yeah it felt like what could we do to punch up this story because it seems kind yeah. of ridiculous anyway like well we'll have her call jason name because reasons okay yeah. Stepping away from whether the story was good or bad, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump into that landmine. But <laughs> this is a notable change in tack from the Wizards of the Coast things that they put on their homepage. Now I know right. that Wizards is like Magic is branded as a thirteen plus game, right? So you can have PG thirteen language or whatever. But they have been very careful to str- to stay away from um, you know, incendiary language of any kind. Hmm. Um, you know, in in anything that they've put out online. Um, now, in the novels, there have been hints at sex scenes or um, uh, uh, crazy violence that's only hinted at on magic cards, but certainly spelled out in detail uh, 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 in the books. Um, but that's a different. That's a whole different ball of wax, right? That's a whole different audience. Than right. people who go to wizards.com and are like, oh, well, I wonder what today's story is. Oh dear, the asshole word is on the web. You're just looking today. for excuses to say the word. He really now. is. Like it feels yeah. good. Mm. We get you. At, like, and then I he tatered. Heroes. <laughs> you straight tatered as soon as you did it. You straight tatered. I think you're. I think your internet's being an asshole, Riven. Wow. <laughs> Tell me when I'm back. You're back. Okay. <laughs> I want. The anti-heroes, I want the Vraskas, especially pirate Vraska, 
Like, P- Pirate Vraska having a potty mouth is not surprising. Um, let's just get that out of the way. But I also want, you know, your Sarkon Vols, your, uh, maybe not Liliana, but like, you know, your dark twinged planeswalkers to have a little bit of an edge to them. You know what I mean? I don't want them all to, to be all about murder and genocide and, and pillaging, but then avoid salty language. Like, that doesn't hold up for me either. So, you know, you can have some dark stuff in fantasy, and I'm okay with that. And this is, like, pretty tame compared to what we could have had. So, so I, I'm, I understand why there's a little bit of surprise, um, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So what you're saying is that they were, that she was cursing like a sailor? Yes. <laughs> oh, she was cursing Got like there. a sailor. Yes. It's Got like there. not even, it's not even a double entendre. It's yeah. literally a single entendre. <laughs> she was cursing like a sailor. She Period. Like, that's it. Bless your heart. Wow. All right. So we had 974 entries. It is time to pick a winner for our mm. Ixalan bundle. Wow. Um, and I believe uh, Moho had contacted me on YouTube. Hit us up on Twitter, please. It's a better way to get a hold of us uh, about a previous contest that they won. So here we go. And winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations to Tyler L. from Colorado Ooh. Springs, Colorado. Nice. Uh, please hit us up on uh, on Twitter. You can hit up the Magic Mike's cast or at Mr. Orange for me. Um, uh, Tyler, get a hold of us. Let me know what your last name is, which lets me know it's you. Um, otherwise, we would be happy to send you an Ixalan bundle. Which you're, and they're in, they're in the United States, so I can actually send them right. a bundle. Instead nice of time. Instead of Thailand. Or whatever. <laughs> I, those coins went out this morning. Perfect. Nice. On their way. Uh, the nice. the gold doubloons, man. Let me tell you, those things are hot, hot fire. For next week, can you bring some home so that I can see them on the show? Absolutely. That'd be great. I, I'm really excited, I, and I know that uh, as of this weekend, this weekend is the pre-release, so everybody go have a good time. I'm excited about it. You know, I'll for, be there. For me, I'm really excited about it because we have like this custom playmatic cool stuff games and the gold doubloons, and I want to talk to people about how much they feel about it, whatever. Uh, and I've heard from multiple people. Dressing up as pirates or dinosaurs at this point. Amazing. Multiple. Love it. Multiple. I have to commission somebody to make me a hook so I can be that Jedi quartermaster because yeah, people exactly. love to. Ta- I still get people tagging me in that. They're like, it's you. And I'm like, all right, I guess I got to sprinkle, hook me up with a hook because we're doing right. this. So. Love That's it. awesome. <laughs> and so, next week we have our big box giveaway. Yeah, That's right. Set. Giving away a full booster box of Ixalan next week. Join yep. us for that. But now that we've chosen our winner, it is time to turn the corner to the finisher. So, this week, our fellow content producers Josh Lee Kwai and Jimmy Wong released their latest game nights, this time straying away from their usual Commander videos to venture into a game of Two-Headed Giant against our other fellow content producers at Magic the Amateurine, uh, Maria Bartholdi and Megan Wolf. And the internet reacted in a totally reasonable manner to the ever-so-slight change of wait a minute. By that, I mean the internet happened to the tune of over 100 comments on Reddit. Jesus. Everyone's pissed off. How dare they? Yeah. So in Insane. honor of that ridiculousness, how do you think we should piss off our Redditors this week? Aaron? Well, for next week's Magic Mics, we're doing Magic Mics Unplugged. It'll just be Evan and Ruben muted for 75 minutes, also known as my personal heaven. Just Yep. It'll just be, <laughs> be me potatoing for an hour and 15 minutes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ruben, what do you say? Uh, well, for next week's Magic Mike's Top 10, Aaron, Evan, and I will only be ranking our Magic Mike's Top 7 Top 8s. Why not 9, though? Well, as you know, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. See, that's a double entendre. <laughs> Man. Well... Next week, Magic Mike is introducing a new program, Hearthstone Mikes, because hashtag that Hearthstone money. That Hearthstone money. <laughs> that Hearthstone money. And that ends another episode of Magic Mikes. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. 
that we're going to move on to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-host, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler, and you guys for watching and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Visit our website at MagicMicsPodcast.com that exists thanks to our Patreon supporters, or follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, do everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online at Twitch.tv slash Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, on Reddit at Reddit.com slash R slash Magic Mics, and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Magic Mics. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast at Libsyn.com, or find us on iTunes or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.